Hello, everybody. I'm John Schneider, your host for Jersey Bayshore Country. On this episode, we're going to take a boat trip to one of our closest neighbors, New York City, or the Big Apple, as they say. It's usually seen pretty clearly from any of the 35 miles of beaches that we have here at the Jersey Bay Shore. In fact, when we bring folks to one of the highest places in our area, which is the Twin Lights of Navasink or Mount Mitchell, the first thing they usually say is, I had no idea New York City was so close. And it is pretty close. From the Jersey Bay Shore, New York City, as the crow flies, is about 20 miles away. And on a clear day, it seems a lot closer. And when folks come for a vacation to our area, they go to the beaches or they go boating, fishing or shopping. But more likely than not, if they're not from the New York City area, they will often take a day trip to the Big Apple. So by car, it's less than an hour away. By ferry or boat, it's a 30 minute trip. And by helicopter, it's just a matter of minutes. But today we don't have the luxury of taking a chopper, but we are lucky enough to hitch a ride on a yacht headed across Raritan Bay up the Ambrose Channel to the Hudson River, all the way to the George Washington Bridge, where we'll turn around and then come back. And while New York City is where all the action is, we've got plenty to see from the deck of our boat, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. So let's shove off from Hartshorn Woods Park, where there are some very beautiful hiking trails and lots of major relics of military history. We're going to head down current now on the Shrewsbury River, and we're going to cross under the bridge that goes from Highlands to Sandy Hook and Seabright. So there's Sandy Hook over there. And here's Highlands, great little town on the Jersey Bay Shore. And incidentally, this is the town and the river where Gertrude Ederly practiced swimming against the current so she could become the first woman in history to swim across the English Channel. So now we're passing lots of great waterfront restaurants, marinas, and homes. Everyone here loves to fish at the bulkheads. It's always fun to see the variety of boats on the water. You always see something different, like this boat. It's the Army Corps of Engineers, hard at work, dredging the Shrewsbury River. The beaches are clean, and they're uncrowded, and there's not a lot of big waves to get, you know, washed out to sea with. There's no riptide. And that building up there on the hill, that's called East Point, and it too has a beautiful view for residents. Supposedly, Frank Sinatra had a place there. We're going to talk about Frank a little bit later. And here's one of the ferry terminals in Highlands. There's another one in Atlantic Highlands, Belford, and also at Sandy Hook. Oh, look at that old paddle wheel boat over there. You can also, if you want to, charter a boat to take you to Manhattan. And to our left is Atlantic Highlands over there, a great big marina with lots of sailboats, waterfront restaurants. And here comes one of the ferries on its way to New York Harbor. We'll probably see it again later. They go back and forth all day long. And over there on Sandy Hook is the historic Fort Hancock, which was once a major defense against the attack of New York City, if one ever came. Also over there is the historic Sandy Hook Lighthouse behind Officer's Row. Well, there's the tip of Sandy Hook, and off in the distance, that's Brooklyn, New York, and the Ambrose Channel runs between the two bodies of land. Here's a small boat that will definitely rock when we go by, I guarantee it. And here's Raritan Bay. It's a very impressive expanse of water, which is really the pride of the Jersey Bay Shore. Boats of all sizes and shapes travel across its surface all the time. Oil tankers cross the bay and go up to Arthur Kill. Container ships and ocean liners with passengers go up the Ambrose Channel, and that's the direction we're taking. Well, there's Highlands and Atlantic Highlands behind us, so we're getting closer to New York. 
Now here's historic West Bank Light, officially called West Bank Front Range Light. <laughs> it was built in 1901, but it's no longer active, of course. It's nice to look at, however. Another shot of Brooklyn, and, and you can see Coney Island if you look really closely. On a clear night, you can see it all lit up. It's uh, very beautiful. So now we're in Lower New York Bay, which I still think of as Raritan Bay. And here comes the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, which is a double-decked suspension bridge connecting Staten Island on the left to Brooklyn on the right. And geographically, this area is called the Narrows. So Brooklyn is on our right, and Staten Island is on our left, where Fort Hamilton is located. On July 4, 1776, a small American battery at this site fired into one of the British men-of-war convoying troops to suppress our revolution. Yeah! <laughs> Good luck with that. You know what happened. Later, during the War of 1812, our country began taking seriously the need for coastal defenses, and so the cornerstone for Fort Hamilton was set in place sometime later. And there off in the distance is New York City, and the tallest building that you see is the so-called Freedom Tower, and we're going to talk more about that in a little while. There's a passenger liner over there on our left by Staten Island. Look at the size of that thing. And we'll also see our fair share of tugs, the workhorses of the New York Harbor. And look how cool the Staten Island ferry looks with an orange color scheme. Hard to miss it, right? By the way, New York Harbor is one of the largest natural harbors in the world. And now we're at the southern tip of the island of Manhattan. Lower Manhattan, or downtown as it's called, is mostly the center of business and government of the city of New York. And there she is, Lady Liberty. God, I love her. All right, you probably heard the story a hundred times, but here it goes again. The Statue of Liberty has a formal title as a work of art. Did you know that? I mean, it's a sculpture, right? So the French translation, because it was a gift from the French, is liberty enlightening the world. The statue was designed by Frederick Auguste Barholdi and dedicated in 1886. It was a gift to the United States from the people of France. And do you remember what she's got inscribed on the tablet or the book that she's holding? Do you remember? It's the date of the Declaration of American Independence, July 4th, 1776. And what lies at her feet, do you remember? It's a broken chain, of course, and guess what that symbolizes, yeah. And there's the Freedom Tower once again, where all the other buildings surround it look small in comparison. Some very impressive looking sailboats in New York Harbor, but I don't see any really small boats. And another helicopter, didn't I tell you? And on our left is Ellis Island, where 12 million immigrants passed through the now still halls from 1892 to 1954. That was 60 years ago, and they were all searching for the American dream, lest we forget. Look at this great-looking schooner starting to head up the Hudson River. Speaking of schooners, a few moments of silence, please, for this beauty. Wow! And here's a nice slow pan from the southern tip of Manhattan and along the Hudson River. And now we're looking back over our left shoulder again at Jersey City. You know, I, I do like some of those buildings. They look great, don't they? And here's an historic building in Jersey City. It was built in 1889 and it was the terminal for the Central Railroad of New Jersey until about 1967. Today, the terminal is part of Liberty State Park, and more than 10 million people entered the country through this station. Ah, the world-famous Circle Line. And now we're passing a lot closer to the Freedom Tower on our right. Again, another look at the waterfront of New York City. 
And, and don't the buildings look like they're computer-generated graphics? I mean, maybe it's the light, but they just don't look real. Maybe it's me. All right, let's keep going. Maybe this sailboat will eventually make it out to Raritan Bay. Lots of boats do, in fact, come to the Jersey Bay shore for lunch or dinner before heading back to Manhattan. Okay, one more look at this incredible tower. It's pretty high up there, so don't, uh, don't go up if you get nosebleeds. And you know, let's not forget the old gray lady herself, the Empire State Building, which at one time was the tallest building in the world. I lived right near it. And to be fair, there's the Jersey side of the river again. Cool looking boat. And there also on the Jersey side is the main air vent for the Holland Tunnel, connecting the city to New Jersey. It was completed in 1927. And here's a little trivia. Do you know the official name of the Holland Tunnel? You don't, do you? <laughs> Neither did I. I had to look it up. It's the Clifford Milburn Holland Tunnel. Holland was his last name, not the country. Originally, however, it was just called the Canal Street Tunnel. And here's Pier 46, which is part of the River Park area, and the park is geared toward what New York calls passive recreation. And on our left is the beginning of Hoboken, New Jersey, another old railroad terminal. And Hoboken is also where Frank Sinatra hung his hat once in a while. So there's even a park named after Frank Sinatra in Hoboken. Beautiful park, by the way. And ever vigilant, New York's finest, the New York Police Department is patrolling the Hudson River. By the way, there was an annual tugboat race in this area earlier in the day. Lots of fun to see, especially from a boat, I'm sure. I used to live near the Empire State Building on 34th Street when I was younger, so there are lots of fond memories. I love the old girl. More of those infamous racing tugs. Look at them go. <laughs> ah, equal time. The Fire Department of New York does such a great job in protecting the city and the waterways from fire, explosions, and and here's Pier 57, filled with lots of shops and events. And right next door, a place to practice your golf swing as you look out over the Hudson River, not too shabby. And again, my friend, the Empire State Building, so we're a few streets south of that. And here's Chelsea Piers by 23rd Street and where there are lots and lots of things to do. I actually rented out part of this place for a video shoot I did years ago. I love this place. Another boatload of tourists. Now, if they were just headed toward the Jersey Bay Shore, <laughs> ah, there's the northern end of Hoboken, right near the Lincoln Tunnel, very up and coming area, as they say. Here's the New York side again, but take a look at that crazy place. I don't know if it's a restaurant or a bar. Oh, it doesn't sink. Looks pretty rusty. Another look at the Jersey side. The Hoboken Yacht Club is over there as well as some ferries which will take you back to the Jersey Bay Shore. And here's a look at New York from about 34th Street and uptown. Like the Holland Tunnel, this is the air vent for the Lincoln Tunnel on the New York side. So let's go across the river to the Jersey side and there's an air vent over there. And the tourists on the circle line are being told the same thing. <laughs> You heard it first here, though. There is the George Washington Bridge off in the distance. That's where we're headed. But first, we're approaching something very cool. It's an aircraft carrier in the Hudson River. Imagine that. It's the intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum with some very interesting and historic aircraft. You see the aircraft carrier? And it's all located at Pier 86 at about West 46th Street. There's a barge up the river, see it? And here's New York, a little more uptown, probably in the 50s, between 50th and 59th Streets, that is. While some buildings were here in the 1950s, many are far newer. Here's something quite old. It's an old abandoned coal dock. Coal was incredibly important during the industrial age when New York City grew rapidly, as you might imagine. And look, 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 kayaking on the Hudson. Nothing could be more fun. Well, maybe a few things could be more fun, like being in the boat I'm in right now. I'm having a ball. Just more buildings on the New Jersey side, but don't have a clue what they are. Maybe, maybe you know. Here's that barge we saw down river a few minutes ago, but it kind of looks like a boat, doesn't it? I, I don't know what it is.
Here's uptown New York City with a few more trees than downtown and far more residential. Here's Riverside Church up around 120th Street. And here is Grant's tomb. You know who's buried in Grant's tomb? Well, the answer is it's our 18th president, Ulysses S. Grant, and his wife. It was completed in 1897, and it's located in Riverside Park in the Morningside Heights neighborhood of Upper Manhattan. And as you can see, we're getting closer to George Washington Bridge. And this thing, you tell me, I can't seem to find it in the tour books. Or this, please, please tell me what it is. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. The George Washington Bridge, which stands very high above the Hudson River, with its western end embedded in the wooded bluffs of New Jersey's Palisades, crossing the Hudson River, and its eastern part is resting on the shores of Manhattan. The construction of the bridge started in 1927, and when it was completed four years later, it was actually twice as long as any previous suspension bridge in history. And it's got the strength to carry two levels of roadway, and a railroad. <laughs> there are actually four main suspension cables, each composed of a single strand carried back and forth across the Hudson River 61 times. And each strand itself is a bundle of 434 individual wires. <laughs> okay, here we go under the bridge. And what's that, you ask? Well, a little red lighthouse? Why, yes, it is. <laughs> it's been there since the early 1920s, and officially, it's called Jeffrey's Hook Light. It was actually made famous by a 1942 children's book called The Little Red Lighthouse and the Great Gray Bridge by Hildegard Swift. Look at this teeny tiny tugboat. <laughs> I guess everything looks small next to the GW Bridge. Huh? Palisades are really a steep line of cliffs along the west side of the Hudson River that stretch all the way to Nyack, New York, which is about 20 miles away from here. The cliffs rise up about 300 feet right here, and as you go to Nyack, they raise up about 540 feet. So these are significant cliffs. It's what a great looking bridge. And, and you know what? Not many people get to see it from below like we are. So here we are, trying to beat a potential rainstorm with lightning. Yikes. One last look at Lower Manhattan and the Freedom Tower. Goodbye to Jersey City right across the Hudson River. Look at that glint of sunlight on the chrome-like surface. Well, we can certainly see the wind picking up now. See how choppy the water is out here in New York Harbor? And see how the clouds are turning a little more ominous? Boat traffic is plentiful in the harbor today. Actually, every day it's plentiful. I mean, New York City is the city that never sleeps, but the harbor also never sleeps. I mean, some boats are, are here 24 hours a day moving in and out. Now, some boats are headed south and some boats are headed north, like this container ship full of things we need really badly. Well, goodbye to the Big Apple and hello, storm clouds. Here's another container ship that has gone under the Verrazano Bridge. Look at all those containers. More stuff we need right away. <laughs> You remember Fort Hamilton, right? Well, that's uh, that's it. And of course, uh, you remember the bridge that crosses the Narrows, the Verrazano. Not many boats out because they know a storm is coming. And there is home, the New Jersey Bay Shore. Well, it's not looking good. I, I tell you, I saw a lightning bolt a while ago, but wasn't fast enough to get it on camera to show you. And you remember this lighthouse. It's all coming back, right? And I'm on a pretty big yacht, so it's uh, it's going to be important to stay in the channel as we head home because we don't want to kind of hit the bottom here. And you remember, red right return. So the red buoy has to stay on our right, and the green buoy has to stay on our left, and we'll be just fine. 
there's the tip of Sandy Hook once again. There's the old lighthouse at Sandy Hook, and right in front of it, the abandoned officers' quarters. Homeport is definitely closer now, and so are the seagulls who like following us because they think we have fish for their dinner. All right, while we look at this uh, beautiful bird in flight, I'm going to ask you, how much do you think you know about seagulls? Hmm? Okay, well, here comes some seagull trivia. First of all, seagulls are very clever. They, they learn, they remember, and they even pass on behaviors like stamping their feet in a group to imitate rainfall, and they can trick earthworms to come out to the surface as a result. That's smart. Seagulls are attentive and caring parents. The male and female generally pair for life, and they take turns incubating the eggs and feeding and protecting the chicks. Now, gulls also have a complex and highly developed repertoire for communication, which includes a range of vocalizations and body movements. And there you have it, everything I know about seagulls. And there are the hills of Atlantic Highlands and Highlands. Oh, look, he's back. And here we are entering the channel for the Shrewsbury River. So it's time to return your seats and tray tables to their upright positions as we prepare for our landing at the Jersey Bay Shore. I really hope you enjoyed our trip to the George Washington Bridge, but realize while it was fun, there's no place like the Jersey Bay Shore. And like many others, you'll return here again and again to enjoy everything we have to offer. I really appreciate you joining us on the cruise, and I'll see you after docking. It's been my pleasure to have you with us. It really has, folks. So bye-bye. Well, speaking of New York City, we're going to talk to an artist, a friend of mine, Mike Kwan, who paints a lot of pictures that are all about New York City. Here he is, my interview with Mike Kwan. I always had an interest in being an artist, and uh, I guess part of that came through my father, who was, he happens to be 100 years old, and he is the last surviving animator from Fantasia and Dumbo. He did the stork and Dumbo and the Chinese mushrooms and the goldfish in 1939. I uh, have my own style and he, he respects that as well. Uh, but, you know, one is much more controlled and I'm a little bit more wild. Uh, I inspired him when I went to China in 1979. I created a, a series of Chinese zodiac animals. And then after that, he started doing sketchbooks because I, I did sketchbooks when I traveled. And I think he has over 75 sketchbooks now that he, he created s since uh, 1979. And he, he'll draw standing in line to a movie or at a restaurant. I mean, I've you know, seen, you know, beautiful masterpieces just while he's kind of waiting in line somewhere. I do a lot of uh, architectural renderings in my kind of pop art style, which you might see behind me. It's, it's not very realistic, and it um, is inspired by uh, approaching a canvas, sometimes not knowing exactly what's going to happen. Uh, it involves dripping and throwing paint and, and just being spontaneous. It's, it's, 
maybe being in California, the the bright colors have always appealed to me, and uh, the sunshine there every almost every day just got me involved with uh, just a lot of energy. Um, I go back to California, but I'm very happy to be back east here, and uh, I like the changes of the seasons and um, I seem to be pretty passionate about doing painting now uh, it's very uh, it's become an obsession a bit and I stay up late at night uh, when everybody's asleep and maybe start in two or three canvases but I guess it's sort of like my father because I've called my dad late at night and I found out that he starts two or three paintings at one or two in the morning and he doesn't work from photographs and so he's he's really quite amazing he just when he was 99 he had a museum show at the Vincent Price Art Museum in Los Angeles and um, you know it was, it was very impressive to me how he keeps going and of course he's very classically trained and uh, you know my art is a little bit more self-taught and uh, inspired by um, you know a lot of the pop art influences uh, although he tried to steer me in the direction of being uh, a dentist or a doctor uh, that was a I didn't have a clue with medicine and in fact at UCLA they they pulled me out of the class and said that I didn't belong there in the sciences, so. Well, as we look at some of Mike's paintings, I want to say goodbye and thank you again for watching Jersey Bayshore Country. I'm John Schneider. Watch next week. We'll have a brand new episode. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>